Good morning. We are thankful and blessed that you can join us today for the Crescenta Valley United Methodist Church's worship service. This is the fourth Sunday of Easter, May 3rd. Today our service will include the celebration of Holy Communion with Pastor Paul. So you have time to get your bread and juice ready before we get to that point in the service. For our announcements today, continue to send in your prayers for our prayer team that are meeting on Tuesday at 6.30. You can send in your prayers all during the week. Thank you for sending your pledges and your offerings. We appreciate this and we appreciate all of you who have been sending them in. Our youth group will meet again today at 3 o'clock on Zoom. Um, as, it, as it has been, it is open to anyone from 6th grade through high school. And if your sibling wants to join, you can join us also. Next week, we will not be meeting on Mother's Day, so keep that in mind. Um, the Bailey Center, thank you all for contributing and bringing your goods in yesterday. Um, I know they really appreciate it. Um, we took over what was in the, the room, had been in there for a while, and Connie Wright wrote us a very nice letter thanking us for that. Um, she tells us that they've been closed for a month, and they had just reopened last week, so it was just in time. They're still serving 500 families and individuals a month with five days' supply of food and clothing as needed. Um, this includes fixed-income seniors, needy families, and the homeless in our valley. She wants to tell you that you make a difference in the world of hunger. So today I want to leave you with, last week at Youth Group we talked about John um, 15, chapter 11, where he talks about joy. And we talked about the difference between joy and happiness. That happiness is a feeling, but joy is deeper. With joy there is hope. With joy, hardship offers growth and opportunity. Joy is a state of being, a state of peace and content. Even if everything in your life isn't perfect, God's joy can dwell in you as you dwell in him. So this week we wish you peace, joy, hope, love, and good health. And we'll be seeing you soon.
gather us in, Lord. Good morning. This is Sunday, May 3rd, and thank you for bringing your minds and spirits to this communal online worship. So as sheltering in place continues, uh, the novelty has worn off, there's confusion, frustration, dissension as to how to proceed. Um, some are quite adamant and claim certainty about an uncertain future. Um, we, we continue to thank those who are uh, working to understand the, the biology, the chemistry, uh, how to adapt our behavior to uh, the reality of this virus and to all those um, researching treatments. But we, we might agree that only God knows where we're headed. And we pray for, um, for patience as we proceed. And I ask this, what, what if we cared for each other at least as much as we care for our own opinions? How would the world look then? As the need for food and health care grows with unemployment, uh, we see some with plenty using the cover of this crisis to take even more. Uh, so we pray for them, for those who confuse possessions and political power for God's love. May they be satisfied with their daily bread. Uh, may they let go the game, let go their hold and release resources for those who are in need. And that brings us to um, our neighborhood in Tahunga, the Bailey Human Care Center, who continues to provide food for families in need. And we give thanks to Debbie and Janice, who are coordinating efforts to gather food for them. Thanks to everyone who's been contributing and to the Montrose Peace Vigil, took a special collection last night. So um, peace and praise for those who are reaching out to those in need. And in our community, we have those who are close to us, um, who are in need of prayer. We give thanks for all who are feeling healthy and strong through this. Uh, and able to take care of their family members themselves. We pray for those who are feeling insecure about their family members who might be vulnerable um, due to their age, their, um, their work, being first resp responders or grocery workers, um, anyone who knows mail carriers, anyone out there delivering services, essential services. We pray for them and for um, trust and hope in the hearts of those close to them. Pray for those who are facing disease and pain, uh, both physical and emotional. Pray for Lily and Chip and Wayne and Greg. We give thanks for um, the relative ease that Betty's sister experience in her uh, chemotherapy treatments. Uh, what a blessing that is to move through that process with ease. May that be true for all those facing those treatments. Uh, we pray mercy and compassion in our justice system and all who uh, might be moving 
through that part of um, experience these days. And thanks to all of you who are joining in these prayers and we're going to lift them up and Barb will be um, aiding our spirits in that as she plays for us. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning to all of you who have joined us. I wanted to be here to let you know how much I miss you all. You are my church family. I wanted to especially thank several of you for all of your hard work. Thank you, Janice, for keeping us all aware of the happenings in our church. Jean, for your beautiful prayers during joys and concerns. And Barb, thank you for leading our music and weaving all of it into a meaningful and touching church service. Ricky, Alexis, and Tim, thank you for your uplifting music. A special thanks to our, our guest musicians, Wayne, Perrin, Melissa, and Pam. To all of the folks behind the scenes who are keeping everything running, and to Pastor Paul for his weekly prayers and sermons. You, my church family, are in my prayers daily. Peace be with, uh, with you all and stay safe. And now, let us be in an attitude of prayer and silent meditation. Oh gracious God, as we have gathered for worship, may you be present with us and help us to live in love, kindness, and patience with family, friends, and to show care for those we do not know well, but who live among us. We thank you for our lives, for home and friends and family. We thank you for the promises 
and the possibilities and the beauty of nature that is all around us. We thank you that in our experience of life, when it may seem and feel like we are passing through fire, we are not alone. For you are there as our companion and friend to help provide us with strength and compassion when our minds and bodies have grown tired and weary from the events being experienced in our lives. We thank you that you hear and respond to our prayers for friends and associates with whom health for loved ones is a present concern, for grandparents who live both near and far away. May you provide them with comfort as you embrace them in your arms. We thank you that so often you have come to us in the ordinary and everyday moments of life and help us to seek you and find you and serve you as Christ sought, found, and served us. This we pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our gospel lesson for the morning comes to us from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Word of God for the people of God. Throughout the Judeo-Christian faith, the image of the shepherd has been stamped upon our minds. In our scripture lesson for the morning, Jesus again taps into this imagery when he refers to himself as the Good Shepherd. For a few moments this morning, I would like for us to examine together what Jesus had in mind when he described himself as the Good Shepherd. For a little background, the image of a shepherd was a part of Jesus' heritage and culture. Abraham, the father of the nation, was the keeper of great flocks. Moses was tending the flocks of his father-in-law, Jethro, when God called him into a special service. And David was a shepherd boy called in from the fields to be the king of Israel. Now, first of all, Jesus said, 
there are two shepherds. Outwardly, there seems to be no difference. The skin of both have been tanned by the sun and weathered by the wind. They both carry a fleece to keep them warm at night. Both carry a shepherd's crook, but one is a genuine shepherd and the other one is a counterfeit. One is a shepherd in his heart, the other is a shepherd for hire. On an ordinary day, you could never tell them apart, but let trouble come. Let a pack of wolves appear, and then the difference comes out. He has no ownership, but the real shepherd stays. Jesus said in our text, I lay down my life for my sheep. That is the difference between the real shepherd and the counterfeit. And here is the good news, that the good shepherd will never leave your side. Jesus shares with us that it does not matter the path that we have been on, maybe even in times being away in that foreign land. Jesus will always be by our side. Jesus will not desert us in times of trial. That is news that will let us get through the night. That is news that will help us to keep our, our minds well. Second, the good shepherd knows his sheep. It is an interesting thought that the creator of the universe knows you and me and knows our every situation. Jesus said, my sheep know me. The question for us to ponder this morning is, are we attuned to God's voice? I suppose all of us have seen the painting done in the 1930s of a dog looking with a little cocked head at an old RCA phonograph. Do you know what the name of that painting is? It is titled, The Master's Voice. I know that in my life, I have not always recognized my master's voice. There are times, have been times, when I have been too busy, too preoccupied, or sometimes I am afraid to hear the voice, for I know that the Lord will say what I may not want to hear. But I know that it is important for me to hear once again the words of the Good Shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. And finally, the Good Shepherd also sacrifices. Jesus worded it this way. The shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Lay down your life for this, this animal? It hardly seems reasonable. That is, until we remember that, that we are the sheep that Jesus is talking about. There is a word in the lexicon of our faith that describes what Jesus did by giving his life for us. It is called atonement, the giving of one's life on behalf of another. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. I remember back in my college days of a popular poster that was sometimes put in the dorms where you went to school. And one in particular was this of a photo of Martin Luther King Jr. And it's at the quote, and it simply said, no cause is worth dying for unless you truly believe in it. In other words, you don't have a life worth living for if you don't have a cause worth dying for that if we are to follow the shepherding model 
as laid down by Christ, then to make a sacrifice in some fashion is in part a character of our faith. It is not enough that we simply remain sheep. Christ is calling each and every one of us into the role of a shepherd. Jesus asked Simon Peter one day, Peter, do you love me? And remember, Peter replied, Lord, you know that I do love you. Then came the reply, feed my sheep. And throughout our walk in faith, one way we can be faithful is to care for one another as Christ cared for us. And now, as we listen to our communion music, I invite you to prepare your elements of the bread and the cup before you, and then I will be back to share in the consecrating of the elements and to guide each and every one of you through this time of Holy Communion. Amen. Let us remember that after Jesus had partaken of the Passover meal with his disciples, he took bread and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, take and eat in memory of my body broken for you. Likewise, he took the cup and after giving thanks to God, gave it to his disciples to drink, saying, Drink this in memory of my blood shed for you, and may these elements of the bread and cup nourish your bodies and souls into life everlasting. Amen. I now invite you to take your bread, and if you take a piece of bread, it's the body of Christ, and let us then dip the bread into your juice the blood of Christ shed for you and let us partake and let us pray we thank you Lord for this meal of grace provided this day and may these elements of the bread and cup nourish our bodies and souls into life everlasting. As we are in our homes, may we arise and go in peace, and may the peace of our Lord go with you. Amen.
And as we go forth into this new day, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We'll need strength for the journey Giving her strength